We are in AP Calculus AP, self-check 2.3, let's dive in. All right, we have a function here, excellent, and it's asking all of this increasing, decreasing. Every single one of these definitions is an F prime or an F double prime? Okay. F prime, so I mean, we need to find F prime. F prime of X in this case is going to be what, Diego? Slope. Slope, and then tell us what it is. That's 3X squared minus 12. Minus 12. There it is, and we need to set this thing equal to zero so that we can find where our critical values are, therefore we can find where it's increasing and decreasing. Because usually critical values are those gatekeepers of switching between increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to set 3x squared minus 12 equal to zero, so zero is equal to 3x squared minus 12, and I'm going to solve. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides, meaning I get 12 is equal to 3x squared. I'm going to divide both sides by three, and I get four is equal to x squared, and then I'm going to square root, meaning I get x is equal to plus or minus two. So I get x is equal to, I'll just say, negative two, and x is equal to positive two. Then I make my number line, and I put negative two and positive two, and then I do some sort of test point. And technically, um, this is the same thing Ooh, yeah, so I have to be careful about this. Like, I'm not sure um, if I am going to switch the signs yet because I haven't factored yet, so maybe I should just do a test point for each of these. I think that's the fastest way. Um, let's do a zero that's in between here. When I plug in zero into F prime, I'm going to get zero minus 12, which is a negative. Negative means I have F decreasing, and let's choose another test point. Let's plug in three. When I plug in three, I'm going to get some big number here, like three squared is going to be nine. Nine times three is 27. 27 minus 12 is positive. So this is going to be F increasing, and finally let's do a test point over here, like negative three. I'm going to plug in negative three, it's going to still be positive because anything squared is going to be positive, and it's going to be an even bigger positive, like 27. 27 minus 12 is still positive, so it's positive again over here. That means I have F increasing. When I'm looking at this question, let's see what it's, I haven't even read any of these multiple choice questions yet. Now I'm going to start reading. Okay, increasing when X is less than negative two. Well, I mean, that's true so far. It's increasing when I'm less than negative two. Decreasing in between negative two and two, which that is true. Decreasing between negative two and two, and increasing for x greater than two, that is the correct answer is A. I want to read each of these just to make sure I haven't made any mistake. This is a common strategy on AP test. Just make sure we don't have anything. If you got the answer and you're low on time, just rush to the next one. If you have time, go back and make sure that the other ones are false so you didn't make a mistake. Decreasing when x is less than zero. Zero is not even a critical value, so those won't work, so I can cross off B. When I'm looking at C, increasing for all x, decreasing for all x, that doesn't make any sense because we clearly saw increasing versus decreasing. And then finally, decreasing when x is less than negative two. Um, it's it's kind of, I think this one is the backwards version of what we already had, right? This is exactly backwards. So decreasing instead of increasing, all of these are just switched. So if we somehow had a sign error, or maybe we had a negative factor out, that could have been it, but no. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down, number one. Did you get it right, Jerome? All right, kind of right. I mean, did you choose A? I got it right, but you know. Not the right way no. that I did, okay. That, I mean, that's not okay, but at least you got it right. Maybe you'll have that same luck on a real AP test, right? Um, number two, the derivative is uh, that thing. Uh, how many points will the graph have a relative max? Okay, definition of F max. Go, Alden. Positive to a negative, um, and I need to actually start graphing this thing for the critical value. So it already told us that this is f prime. It says the derivative of f, therefore f prime. This is f prime. I can set that equal to zero, and very quickly I can get x is equal to zero, x is equal to positive two, and x is equal to positive or sorry negative three. Wrote so too fast there. Those are all of my critical values. So if I'm graph graphing those on the number line, graph them right there. So this is my x-axis, I have a zero, I have a negative three, and I have a positive two. And you see if I have a sign change that goes from a positive to a negative. So let's do a test point. I'm gonna choose one, I think that's the easiest value out of everything to plug in. When I plug in a one, this number will always be positive. Why? Because it's a- uh, One times one times one times one. It's a power, uh, even power. Even power means I'm always positive. So this one I'm going to ignore. This critical value was a zero. When I leapfrog over the zero, it's not going to change sign, okay? Um, when I plug in one to this, I mean one minus two, which is a negative, and I'm gonna write that up here so I don't forget. Oh, that's right, positive. 
And then when I plug in one over here, I'm gonna get one plus three, which is four, which is a positive. This one is always, always a positive. And then in this case, I have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. Therefore, I don't need to talk about F decreasing because this is only asking about sign changes. So again, when I leapfrog over the zero, because that zero came from a power that was a, an even, it's still gonna be negative. But then both a negative three and a positive two were both to a power of one, which means I'm going to leapfrog over them and change to a plus and change to a plus. So there's all my sign graph. And I'm looking for, when I move to the left to the right, I'm looking for a positive to a negative. Positive to negative only happens at negative three. And how many points will it have? It'll only have one. So the correct answer here is B. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I got one out of three, all right, nice. Um, let's look at number three. I have that graph and I'm looking for concave down. Definition of concave down. Georgia, go. F double prime is less than zero, or greater than, less than zero. Less than zero, yeah, you had it right the first time. Concave down means it's less than zero, concave up would have been greater than zero. I'm given F. I have to take the derivative and then the derivative again. Giorgio, take the derivative, go. Um, 12, 12x cubed, um, that's a big number, four, yeah, negative 48x squared plus uh, 48x squared and then 48. So that was... Oh no, zero because it's a constant. Yep. So y prime, there's y prime, and then I take the derivative again, and 3 comes down in front, 12 times 3 is 36, x goes down to the power of 2, minus 48 times 2 is 96, x, and then plus 48. Holy moly, um, that is a lot of numbers. Let's go ahead, and I'm, I'm sure this thing is factorable because I have an x squared, an x, and a constant. Um, let's see if I can get a GCF out of this thing. I'm, I'm thinking a 12, right? Because all of these things, three and four, those are the 12, 48 has a 12, 48 has a 12, all these things have a 12 in them. Let's pull out a 12, and when I'm um, pulling out a 12, that's gonna be with a three x squared minus, what is that gonna be, eight, eight x, plus four. So far so good. And then I'm gonna do a ninja star on this thing. This is a kind of a harder ninja star, so let's see how well we can do this. This one is an advanced ninja star where I have a three x, three x. Um, I multiply three times four to get 12. So they multiply for 12, and they add up to the middle term of eight. Again, where did this 12 come from? It came from three times four. The first term times the last term. All right, let's go through all the multiples of 12 and see if any of them Six and two. Oh, you yeah. got it, of course. Thank you. Six and two, and one of these one is negative. negative. Which one is negative? Both. I would say uh, both. Both, because negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative two plus a negative six adds up to a negative eight. Excellent. Um, this fraction cannot be reduced, so that I'm just going to rewrite it. It's going to be three x minus two. This fraction over here can be reduced. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. That's going to be a x over negative two. When I reduce this fraction of three x over negative six. That means x minus two is going to be my other factor, x minus two, and I still have this 12 factored out. Cool, so I have this uh, second derivative all the way factored, and now I'm ready to start playing with it. Let's go ahead and set this equal to zero and figure out where we have potential inflection points. Where are those pips? So setting this, all right, I'll go too fast. Setting this equal to zero means I have x is equal to two thirds and x is equal to two. Um, so right away, I can start eliminating A, B, and C because those are talking about the wrong points. Um, two thirds and two is between D and E, just knowing the potential inflection points. Now we actually have to figure out if that is uh, concave up or concave down. So let's plug in, we have two thirds as a pip. And we have two as another pip, potential inflection point. Let's go ahead and plug in. I think the easiest thing to plug in here is a zero, personally. Uh, when I plug in a zero, um, again, this 12 will always, always be positive, which means I can kind of ignore the 12. Sometimes you have a negative out front, which really messes you up. Um, and it's always, always negative, so you have to switch the sign. But in this case, we can ignore the 12. When I plug in zero, zero minus two is a negative, so I'm gonna write down here, it's a negative. And again, zero minus two is another negative, so I have another negative. Negative times a negative is a positive, so I have a positive in this case. And check it out. This power is a one, this power is a one. All of these powers are odd, which means I'm going to switch signs every single time I do a leapfrog. It's gonna be turning into a negative and a positive, meaning I have inflection point, is it when I, okay. These are not are pips, they're actually ips. They're actually inflection points. And I'm concave down only between, only where I'm negative here, between two thirds and two. 
what says between two thirds and two? Mm. Correct answer E. Thumbs up, thumbs down. How's you doing on three? But down, wait, isn't down, it down. going like that? Um, this function is going like that. Yeah, so if I'm looking at this function, it goes like that because it is a positive quadratic. I'm just graphing this. Oh, but isn't that concave up? So here's the thing. This is the second group that we're graphing. Oh. On a graph of f double prime, what is f double prime? Height. So it's asking, where do I have a height that is negative? Because f double prime is negative. And I'm negative in between this interval. Okay. Yeah. No, that's really interesting that you're seeing that. I, I don't usually think about it that way, but if you're graphing this quadratic, you're looking for negative heights. You're looking for heights that are below the x-axis. Interesting. Very nice, Dalton. Um, cool. Questions on one, two, or three? Moving on to the last two. Number four. We've got that function, and what are we looking for? For points of inflection. So points of inflection. So we're looking for an f inflection point. And the definition of f inflection point, do you ever did the last definition? We'll give it to Diego. F double prime sign change. Double prime sign change. Always start with the speechy definition and let that lead you. So we need an f double prime. We only have an f. So let's go ahead and find f prime first and take the derivative of that to find an f double prime. If I do f prime, the 7 is going to come down and cancel out with that 7, meaning I'm just left with a 5x to the power of 6. Um, next one, 6 times 4 is 24, x to the power of not 6, but 5, plus, okay, 6 and 5 multiplied by 30, x goes down to the power of 4, plus 1. Okay, that was f prime, let's go ahead and f, do f double prime. Okay, f double prime, 6 times 5 is 30, x goes down to the power of 5, 24 times 5 is 120, and this x is going to go down to the power of 4, and it's going to be plus 30 times 4 is another 120. x goes down to the power of 3, and the derivative of that constant is 0. All right, I know that I'm going to be looking for inflection points, so let's go ahead and factor this bad boy. I'm seeing a 30 in each of these, so if I factor out, oh, and I'm also seeing an x cubed. So 30x cubed, I'm going to factor that out. And that's going to leave me with an x to the power of 2 plus 4x plus 4. Then I'm going to set this thing equal to zero to find those pips, those potential inflection points. We'll check if they're actually dips and inflection points. Oh, wait a second. We can factor this thing even more. Let's do that. I can ninja star this thing. What two terms add to four and also multiply to four? The answer is two and two, meaning that this is x plus two times x plus two and a 30x cubed out front. And wait a sec, there's more. I can go even farther and say that this is 30x cubed times x plus 2 quantity squared because there are a total of two of those terms. All right, I have this thing fully in the factor form. Now let's set it equal to zero. All right, there we go. Set it equal to zero. And let's find those potential inflection points. One of them is where x is equal to zero because I'm setting 30x cubed equal to zero and solving and that's x equals zero. Can we all jump there really quickly or should I show my work? I'm seeing a thumbs up from Diego. We can jump there. Jojo, can you see that? I'm trying to, hold on. I'll show it to you. Can you explain? Ready, set. I'm setting 30x cubed equal to zero. I'm setting x plus two quantity squared equal to zero. In this case, I divide by 30 and then I cube root it and then I'm just left with x is equal to zero. Yeah. And this one, I'm going to square root it, and x is equal to negative 2. Yeah. Excellent. So we have our two potential inflection points. Now, the definition of an inflection point is where you have a sign change. A sign change can only happen when I have an odd power between these two. One of them is odd, and one of them is even. The odd will change. The even will not change. This potential inflection point is just that. It is only a potential. It was not an actual inflection point because we had an even power. This potential inflection point is also an inflection point because we have an odd power. We only have an inflection point at x is equal to zero. That is it. So the correct answer here is B. Cool. Showing you some tricks of the trade. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. How well did you do on number four? Did you get it right? I didn't, I didn't finish it either. Okay, Georgia, did you get to it? Barely. Okay. Barely. Got it. Did anyone get to number five? Uh, I did. 
Can I just guess? Okay, yes, on it. Let's see how well we, we guess. Here we go. Oh, this is like that homework question on number four for the one that Alden was asking about. Natural log of x over x. Do you remember that one? All right, so we are all asked to find increasing or decreasing. Those are invoking the definition of f prime, which means I need to find f prime. So when I'm doing f prime, I immediately notice I have an x and an x. God darn, I'm doing either product or quotient rule. There's division, so I'm doing quotient rule. Here we go. Now, quotient rule, as a reminder, is low d high minus high d low all over low low. Low squared. All right, so low is going to be x d high is going to be 1 over x. Are you really quick at doing log house now? You know, derivative of log x is 1 over x? Oh, yeah. And fast, good. Minus high, which is log of x, natural log of x, rather, um, times the derivative of low, which in this case is just 1. This is all going to be divided by low, low, or x squared. Whew. All right, we got a lot of things there. We need to simplify our f prime. So, check it out. I have an x times 1 over x. That's going to turn into a 1. One. And then minus natural log of x all over x squared. Okay, so in order to find my critical values, I'm going to set the top equal to 0 to find where f prime is equal to 0. And I'm going to set the bottom equal to 0 to find where f prime does not exist. So setting the top equal to 0, I get 1 minus natural log of x equal to 0. Setting the bottom equal to 0, I get x squared is equal to 0. From there, I'm going to add natural log of x on both sides to my left equation, meaning I have 1 is equal to natural log of x. And this is begging the question, what do I plug in for natural log to get 1? And everyone knows that you plug in e. 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 Natural log of E is 1. That's why we do those speech sheets so often. Square the right equation, and x is equal to 0. So we have our two critical values, 0 and E. But this one requires you to plug in because natural log is a tricky mistress. All right, so here's how we do that. I have a 0, I have an E, and I need to plug in some things. If I plug in like a negative 1 over here, so that means I'm plugging in negative 1 into my second derivative, into this x and this x, natural log of negative 1 is what? Long impossible. Impossible! You can never plug in a negative into a natural log function. So that one does not exist. Just scribble all this area out. It's a T and E. We don't know what happens because you can't plug in anything negative into any sort of logarithmic function. Okay, let's plug in. A number like 1. When I plug in a 1, let's do this one. Natural log of 1 is? Natural log of 1 is? Oh, zero. 0. So this thing is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 1 on the bottom, this top bottom is always going to be positive. We never have to worry about the bottom. It's always positive. But I got a 0 on the top, which didn't really help me for the sign. Hmm. Do we... Oh, wait a sec. Natural log of 1. That was positive. What am I thinking? 1 minus 0 is positive. I thought 1 minus 0 is 0. I apologize. The top was positive. The bottom was positive. Therefore, this is positive. My bad. My bad. And let's plug in a number that's super big, like 1,000. I'm, I'm overgeneralizing here because it goes faster. Natural log of a big number is still a big number. 1 minus a big number is... Negative. Negative. Small minus big is negative, so I have negative on the top, bottom is always positive, therefore I have a negative over here. All right, so let's, let's read the question. What am I looking for? Increasing versus decreasing. We know that this is increasing. This is an F increasing here and an F decreasing here, based off of the sign when we're plugging into F prime. And it's saying increasing when we're greater than zero, or increasing greater than E, so that's wrong. Um, this is wrong because it's talking about a one value. Zero and one, again, those aren't values that are critical values. Okay, one and E, again, I, I'm not talking about one. I'm only talking about zero and E. So <laughs> just by knowing the fact that we're talking about zero and E, um, only one of these is talking about zero, but this one is talking about the E. So that has to be it. Let's go ahead and analyze it. Uh, is decreasing for all values greater than E? That is correct because we are decreasing for all values greater than E. I think it's just kind of funny that we knew that the critical values were 0 and E, which were hard to find, granted. You had to know the speechy definition of what is natural log of what is equal to 1. Um, yeah, kind of really Cool. How are we feeling about, or thumbs up, thumbs down on number 5? Oh, you never did. Never mind. Jojo almost got there. Number 5 was tricky, though. This is a hard question. So um, ask me any questions about this speech, or this uh, self-check before we move on to the last self-check of Unit 3. Question.
So if we have an E as one of our uh, critical values, we should plug in a thousand after it. You can plug in E squared, you can plug in any number that you want. Um, I typically plug in bigger values because I do that small minus big thing to find out your negative value, but you can plug in any value. If you know that E is exactly 2.71828, whatever, and you plug in three, that is okay, but you need to know that the natural log of three is slightly bigger than the natural log of E. Knowing that fine distinction is hard for most students, which is why I recommend just plugging in a gigantic value because this is gonna be a gigantic value. You're allowed to plug in any value you want. You can plug in infinity for all I care. It'll still work. Um, infinity doesn't quite work, I, I lied. You, you need to plug in a really big number that's not infinity. All right.